Well, hey guys, today let's talk about the skin benefits of magnesium. Over the years, I've gotten a lot of requests. Please talk about magnesium and skincare. I'm seeing a lot of skincare products, creams, lotions, serums with magnesium. The brands make all sorts of claims of skin benefit. Is there any truth to that? Will putting magnesium on your skin have any sort of potential benefit? We're gonna get into all of that in today's video, and we're also gonna to touch on magnesium supplements and do they have any potential for improving your skin. So if that sounds of interest to you, keep watching. Now, magnesium is something we get from our diet, and it's very important for a ton of stuff in your body. I mean, it's really, really important. Specifically, it is essential for the proper functioning of hundreds of different enzymes. Enzymes are proteins that basically make reactions happen in your body. Enzymes don't just do it by themselves. They need supporting players. They need a team. And magnesium is on that team for a lot of different enzymes. These enzymes carry out so many different reactions, and we're talking big picture things in our body. You have to have a good magnesium to build strong, healthy bones and for maintenance of bone health. In fact, over half of the magnesium in your body is actually stored in your bones. Magnesium also does a lot for electrical signals throughout your body. Your, your body is like a house. Um, you know, it's got plumbing and it's got wiring. So magnesium is really important for the wiring and therefore it's necessary for muscle and for the signals that tell your heart to beat. Because magnesium is so important for a variety of reactions throughout the body, those include biochemical reactions that are really important for controlling your blood sugar and for controlling your blood pressure as well. The skin is this huge, massive organ and it's made up of all of these cells and it's constantly having to build, to repair, to renew, to respond, to heal, to regenerate. It has to keep water in. It has to prevent irritating things from getting in. It has to prevent uh, infectious microorganisms from taking up shop and, and getting into your body and your bloodstream. When your skin fa barrier fails, when your skin fails as an organ system, it's really life-threatening. It's, it's, it's very life-threatening. Uh, you can't regulate your uh, fluids, your electrolytes, uh, you become dehydrated, uh, you can't thermoregulate. I mean, it is, it, is, it is serious. So magnesium is important for a lot of vital functions. So, for example, so when we talk about the skin barrier, here's where, here's where magnesium really comes into play when we talk about the skin. You wanna think about the outermost layer of the skin as like a brick wall. You have these little shells of dead cells, dead keratinocytes. Specifically, they're called corneocytes because they're like these little, little helmets almost. And they are enmeshed in mortar, like a brick wall. So they're the bricks and they're enmeshed in a mortar that glues them together. And that mortar is made up of lipids. Guess what? Magnesium is really, really important for making the lipids in that mortar. So as you can imagine, Magnesium is really important for that watertight seal for keeping water in the skin and keeping it hydrated, smooth, and supple, as well as for preventing stuff from getting in and causing irritation and skin problems. Because magnesium is necessary for so many different enzymes, really another place where it is highly featured, if you will, in the day-to-day -day choreography of your skin is in um, building proteins. I mean, a lot of what your skin is doing is, is protein building, keratins especially, you know, the epidermis, the top layer of the skin, it's this like coordinated um, series of events of, of maturation that get, get you to that shell. Um, it's almost like going up an escalator. And when you get to the top, you're, you're, you're a corneocyte, but when you're at the bottom floor, you're, you're a basal keratinocyte. So you have to make it all the way up to the top. You have to mature, you have to take on different characteristics. All of that requires enzymes, proteins, signals, the immune system coming in and serving things that go awry. And not to mention, we have day-to-day -day environmental stressors assaulting our skin on a regular basis, and that can all lead to you know, oxidative stress, which damages the proteins, the DNA, the lipids in the skin, and your skin has to respond to it. I mean, it's like a lot going on. It's, 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 it's nonstop chaos in the skin, just trying to coordinate everything. So magnesium is really important in that regard for simply protein building. That's the epidermis, but then you've got the dermis, the stuff down below, you have all of this 
um, collagen, right, that gives the skin a lot of its support. You also have elastin, another protein. These things are also responsible for giving the skin elasticity, snap, recoil. And as you guys know, the, the goal is for preservation of good, healthy collagen, because when that starts to go down, which is inevitable, it's part of the natural aging process, that's when we develop uh, wrinkles but we can develop them more quickly due to excessive exposure to an environmental aggressor, sun, the UVA rays come in and you know, destroy the collagen. So good magnesium levels are really important, not only for the proteins that are being made in the epidermis, but also for everything that is being formed down in the dermis. And so if you are pursuing skincare products, ingredients for remedying collagen, aiming to boost collagen or preserve collagen, magnesium is right there, right there at the round table trying to strategize that collagen preservation. So it needs to be there. Magnesium also helps with water content in the epidermis. And I've talked about this before. Not, you know, not only is magnesium essential for the function of a variety of enzymes, but then you've got water content in the, in the epidermis. Magnesium helps bring some of that in. And when the water content is optimal, these enzymes are able to do what they need to do. Magnesium also comes into play when we're talking about healing and recovery, especially wound healing. Like if you get a cut or a scrape, magnesium is really important for that. Part of the healing process involves building proteins and also involves you know, restructuring things, different cells coming in, coordinating events, enzymes are playing a role. I mean, there's a lot to coordinate and magnesium is, is there playing a role in that as well. And of course your skin sees all of these environmental stressors throughout the day, pollution, of course already we talked about ultraviolet radiation, infrared radiation, heat, visible light, all that you know, can lead to what's called free radicals and too many free radicals beyond what your skin can kind of handle leads to something called oxidative stress, which also contributes to premature skin aging. Magnesium is really important for how different enzymes in the skin defend against free radicals. So should we just be putting it on our skin? There's some preliminary research to support the benefit of applying magnesium to your skin and say a moisturizing cream, specifically if you have atopic dermatitis. Now it's still eczema awareness month. So if you're not aware, eczema is an umbrella term for many different skin conditions, seven to be exact. But one of the ones that you probably think of the most is actually atopic dermatitis. Um, and in atopic dermatitis, patients have a problem with their skin barrier. Specifically, remember we talked about the bricks and mortar, the lipids between the bricks, the, cor the lipids between the corneocytes. A really important lipid for the skin barrier is ceramides. And patients who have atopic dermatitis often have deficiency in ceramides and that underlies part of their skin barrier issues and why their skin is vulnerable to losing water and for the penetration of irritants and aeroallergens that trigger flares of red, itchy, inflamed rashes that ooze and weep fluid. That is, you know, the telltale sign of impaired skin barrier is an atopic dermatitis flare-up. People have actually looked at patients who have atopic dermatitis and they gave them a cream with magnesium. The cream also had ceramide in it. And I've talked about this in other videos, but ceramides when applied to the skin may help improve your skin's ability to make some of its own ceramides. This particular study looking at people who have atopic dermatitis, they gave them a cream that had ceramide and magnesium, or they gave um, other people, other patients with atopic dermatitis in the study, just a basic cream without either of these ingredients. Then another subset of people in the study got a hydrocortisone cream, and they applied their respective cream daily. And at the end of the study, people who used the ceramide magnesium cream had better parameters of skin barrier health uh, objectively. Things like transepidermal water loss, moisture content. So it, they had better in comparison to the basic cream. Their parameters were similar to the hydrocortisone cream. Now, if you remember back to my videos on hydrocortisone or topical steroids, um, you know, they're beneficial, they're a mainstay of, of management for eczema, but they, they have side effects. So we're always seeking 
for alternatives. And it's been, it's well established that patients who have atopic dermatitis, if they consistently moisturize, it can help cut down on their need to use topical steroids because uh, it helps cut down on recurrences of flares. And so, um, you know, it's great when we find things that lead to results comparable to a topical steroid because, you know, there are side effects to be had with them. But it's a small study. There are a lot of limitations. And again, the cream that they were studying had ceramide in it. So was it the magnesium or was it the ceramide? Magnesium applied topically may help because it is important for ceramide synthesis. So maybe together they exhibit synergy. It'd be really cool to look and see, you know, how does a cream with ceramide versus a cream with ceramide plus magnesium versus a cream with just magnesium perform. The other thing to keep in mind though is that the magnesium salts, they also bind to water. So that's an additional potential mechanism there. You know, they're improving the water content, which is gonna support epidermal turnover or that maturation process of taking the cells from the bottom floor, right in the elevator all the way up to the top floor to be at the top to be part of the brick wall. There's another study looking at topical magnesium for diaper rash. Diaper rash, basically the skin barrier gets broken down because of the trapping of moisture plus friction on the skin in the diaper areas under, under a diaper. The mainstay for helping to prevent that and control it is the use of something called a barrier cream. Now I have a video all about barrier creams. They're not just for diaper rash. They're helpful for other types of irritant dermatitis that happen in skin folds where you have friction and moisture being trapped that erode at the skin barrier. But this particular study looked at a cream with magnesium in it and showed that it was beneficial for diaper rash. What might magnesium in skincare care actually offer you. The research suggests that it may help with barrier function, but more research is needed to determine that. Now we can sit here all day and, you know, guess that it might help with healing, recovery, repair, help defend against oxidative stress, but we really don't have good data showing that it does any of those things. Ultimately, it's a safe ingredient appears to be helpful. More research is needed, but, uh, I wouldn't drop everything I'm doing and go run out and start, you know, chasing after magnesium. But if you're using a product with magnesium in it and you see an improvement, there's likely mechanisms there. It likely is helping your skin in some way. And there's likely an underlying reason why. Now let's talk about magnesium supplements because a lot of people take magnesium supplements. You know, they're um, common these days in like a lot of electrolyte drinks. And it's also found in, well, milk of magnesia laxatives, antacids, should you take a magnesium supplement? Uh, be careful. So here's the thing about magnesium. Come to find out our soil is lower in magnesium these days than maybe it once was. So there's some question that maybe we're not getting optimal levels from our food all the time, but then again, we don't always eat the best diet these days. A lot of people, unfortunately, you know, subsist off of highly processed, ultra processed foods that maybe don't always have the best nutrient density profile to them. Who knows? Just a guess. Um, so there's some thought that maybe people are not getting ideal levels of magnesium. Frank magnesium deficiency is not common. It can happen though. Signs of magnesium deficiency include nausea, vomiting, fatigue, muscle weakness. Magnesium is so important for electrical signals that you can develop seizures, problems with your heart. Who's at risk for magnesium deficiency? Alcoholics. Alcoholics are an at-risk group for pretty much any kind of nutrient deficiency because unfortunately, um, as part of their disease, they end up you know, not eating. Uh, they just subsist off of alcohol, which is not the most like nutrient-dense food, if you will. Uh, so they are definitely an at-risk group for uh, magnesium deficiency, among other things. And then there's also people who have malabsorption problems. Uh, if you have an uh, inflammatory bowel disease like Crohn's disease, patients who have type 2 diabetes, and older adults, you know, with age, we lose appetite. You know, older adults, unfortunately, you know, they're prone to becoming frail, currently are existing in an epidemic of loneliness, and older adults are really an at risk group and poor appetite. Poor nutrition is, you know, just not a good thing in that group. Uh, so that's definitely a situation where you can run into poor magnesium levels. You may have a suboptimal magnesium level, 
and you're not going to have necessarily any type of symptoms or really feel any type of way. So it becomes this question of like, well, you know, would supplementing be beneficial? I would encourage you rather than supplementing uh, to lean in more to magnesium rich foods, spinach, pumpkin seeds, legumes, nuts, bananas. If you're not able to eat these foods, if you have to be on some sort of restrictive diet for health reasons, make sure you're following with your healthcare provider if you have to do that um, and find out you know, how best to meet your magnesium requirements so that you don't run into deficiency problems or insufficiency problems, we'll say. Supplementing with magnesium may be appropriate in certain situations. A lot of people you know, take a magnesium drink, electrolyte drink, um, and if you're in otherwise good health, what will happen is that if you're low on magnesium, your body will kind of up the ante, if you will, on absorbing magnesium when you are low, you know, on the low end. So whether that be from foods or supplements, and then anything above and beyond that will often just get passed through your urine. But you definitely can't overdose on magnesium supplements. So you want to be careful. It's virtually impossible to overdose on magnesium from food, but you certainly can overdose on magnesium from supplements. It can cause nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, poor mood, depression, low blood pressure, it can definitely be harmful to your health. It can cause kidney problems. So, you know, be careful with magnesium. Uh, you don't want to overdo it. And a lot of people don't realize that, you know, maybe they're interested in trying a magnesium supplement, but pay attention to other things that you are taking in. Like I said, electrolyte drinks, sometimes people don't think about those, but a lot of beverages nowadays, energy drinks even, will have magnesium added. Um, you know, they add all sorts of vitamins and things. So, you know, you want to be careful that you're not getting too much. Now, if you have insufficient or even deficient magnesium, sure, improving your magnesium levels definitely will likely translate to healthier appearing skin. It just makes sense. So important for so many things. It makes sense. But uh, just to arbitrarily take a magnesium supplement in the absence of any kind of insufficiency in the hopes of getting better skin, I would caution you against that. I would strongly encourage you, however, to lean into more magnesium rich foods and incorporating them into your diet. It is a much better way to get it safer, healthier, you know, you get all of the other beneficial compounds from these foods and you got to eat. So I would encourage you to try these. So that's magnesium. Hopefully this video was helpful to you and talking about the science of magnesium in the skin and you know what it does. It does a lot. Uh, your skin does a lot. So there's a lot going on and sure, every little bit counts as far as what's coming from your diet. And if you have any insufficiencies or deficiencies, it certainly can show up on your face. Speaking of whole food sources, recently I did a video on the benefits of eating almonds for your skin. You're going to want to check that video out next. I'll put it on the end slate, but if you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.